Number one has us writing each expression in the form A plus BI, where A and B are real numbers. You can use this number plot here to help you if you want to, but you don't have to. So first thing um, that we need to do is simplify these um, expressions. So in this first one, we see that we have two times the square root of negative four. So I'm just gonna write the two and then times. Now when you're looking at the square root of a negative number, um, remember, so I would do that as the square root of the positive, so positive four, and then times the square root of negative one. So take that negative out. So now two times the square root of four is just two, and the square root of negative one is our imaginary number. So we really have two times two times i, which is four i. Now we wanna make sure we write it in this form, so a real number plus the imaginary part. And so we see we just have an imaginary part here. So our a is zero, plus bi, so plus 4i. So a is zero, um, b is four. And this one, if you just plotted 4i, would just be straight up this axis, this imaginary axis. So you're going zero in the real direction and 4i in the imaginary. So zero plus 4i. Part b um, is 3i times 2i. So three times two is six. And then we have I times I, which is I squared. Remember that I is the square root of negative one. So when we square that, this radical and the squared will cancel. So we just end up with six times negative one, which is just negative six. So now here, we only have a real part. So negative six and then plus zero i or zero imaginary parts. So for this one, it would just be plotted here at negative six. So negative six in the real direction, nowhere in the imaginary direction. Part C is i to the fourth. So we just looked at i squared being negative one, right? So i to the fourth is really i squared times i squared, since two plus two is four. And we know each of these i squareds is negative one. So negative one times negative one is positive one. And then again, that's only a real part. So then plus zero i for that imaginary part. And so this one would be plotted here just at one on the real axis. Um, then D has four minus three times the square root of negative one. Well, the square root of negative one is just I. So this is four minus three I. So that is already in this form where our A is four and our B is negative three. Number two, which expression is equivalent to this? Um, and so we're just going to combine like terms here. You want to make sure when you have a negative here that you realize this is a negative one and you distribute it into these parentheses. So this first part, we have three plus nine I don't really need parentheses around that. Then we're going to distribute this negative in. So negative um, one times five is negative five and negative one times negative three i is positive three i. Then we'll combine three and negative five, which gives us negative two. And then we'll combine positive nine i and positive three i, and that's gonna give us 12 i. So negative two plus 12 i would be the expression equivalent to this. Number three, what are a and b when you write negative 16 in this form, the square root of negative 16 in this form? So remember square root of 16, I would write it as square root of positive 16 times square root of negative one. So square root of 16 is just four. 
and the square root of negative one is the imaginary number. So now we wanna write it in this form where we have a real number plus our imaginary. So we only have the imaginary part here. So the real part is zero. So we have zero plus four i. So this is our a term is zero and our b term is four. Um, so a is zero, so certainly not these. b is positive four. Number four, fill in the boxes to make a true statement. So we have real part plus imaginary, real part um, and imaginary here. Notice this negative out front though. Um, so what I would do here is actually just think of kind of rewriting this. So something minus three I, now I would bring this negative in here so that you don't forget about it. So negative one times 15 is negative 15. And then we'll have a negative and then this box I equals seven minus 12 I, just so we don't forget about that negative. All right, so then for our real parts, we have this minus 15 should equal seven. Okay, so what minus 15 equals seven? and so if you can't just kind of think about that on your own, you could write an equation. What minus 15 equals seven? So then you can just add 15 to both sides. Um, so you get that that box is equal to 22. So this one is gonna be 22 because 22 minus 15 gives us seven. Then we'll look at the imaginary part. So now we have negative three I minus this will give us negative 12. So negative three I minus what I gives us negative 12 I. Can kind of just ignore the I's here. So it's really negative three minus what gives us negative 12. So let's add three to both sides. So we get negative X equals negative nine. So then we'll just divide by negative one here. So we get X equals nine. So this box right here is nine. So 22 in this first one and nine in this one. Number five, plot each number on a real number line, explain why, or explain why the number is not on the real number line. So the square root of 16 is just four. So we can plot that here, so this is A. Then we just have the negative root of 16. Well, the root of 16 is four, and then a negative in front of it is just gonna be negative four, so there's point B. And then square root of negative 16 is equal to four I, so that's not gonna be on the number line because it's imaginary, so it can't be on the real number line if it's imaginary. Um, then 56 to the one half power, remember one half power is the same as the square root. So think of perfect square numbers around 56. So we know that the square root of 49 is seven and the square root of 64 is eight. So the square root of 56 is gonna be between those two numbers. So the square root of 56 is between seven and eight. So somewhere here, so that's D. So then the negative square root of 56 is gonna be between negative seven and eight. And then this one has the negative 56 in parentheses. So that's gonna look like this, the square root of negative 56, and that's not going to be real. So that is not going to plot on the real number line since it's imaginary. Number six, which expression is equivalent to the square root of negative four? So remember when we've got the square root of a negative, think of it as the square root of the positive times the square root of negative one because four times negative one is negative four. So then you can simplify the square root of four to two and the square root of negative one is I. 
So this is equal to 2i.